Real chats with your fave rap artists before they hit the big time. Now, Naj, you have a different style. I, 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 I know there's a lot of rappers out there who I'm sure you've looked up to over the years. But right now, a lot of new rappers and older rappers are looking up to you. How do you feel to be like a, a, a living prodigy? I mean, it's a prop. It's a blessing. I'm a product of hip-hop, you know what I'm saying? I'm a product from, of the old school and the newest of the new. How can, like, how can, this is a big question, no one's there to answer it, and this is staggering. How can Reagan live in a White House, which has a lot of rooms, and there'd be homelessness? And he's talking about helping homelessness. This is what I mean about practicality. All right, if there's someone homeless in Washington, D.C., if there's homelessness, and he has the White House, which has a thousand rooms, why can't he take some of them people off the street and put them in his White House? Because he doesn't want to get dirty. The White House would be a little tainted. And My son, really, my son is the reason why I started rapping. Give myself a chance to try something different because he was coming, you know what I mean? I was going to jail, like, not every, like, every other summer. Like, I, I go to jail, be in jail for a year, so come back, make it the next summer, go back to jail. We're going to summers. All hail the queen. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. And that's coming out what? This December? should be in August. Early early August. Did the du did a duet on it called The Pros. Right. So it is it's real slow, smooth, hardcore, but not, you know, not it's still smooth. It's not wild and crazy. It's kind of deaf. It's how did it feel to be number one? It's a beautiful thing, like number one in the whole country. That's just it's a major accomplishment. Appreciate everybody that went out there and supported that joint. Now, I'm sure everybody was telling you your record was going to come in at number one, but still you don't know until you hear. Where were you when you heard for the first time your record was number one? Well, you know what I mean? I'm like a uh, co-owner of the company, so we was watching the sales all week. You know what I mean? We was calling all the uh, outlets and checking the whole week, so it wasn't like a big shock, though. But when we got the final number, I think I was with my man Michael Kaizo from over at Def Jam, and we went out to... Uh, to the Bronx, so we celebrated cigars and champagne and all that. Yeah. When I like turned 11, I really like started trying to write song songs. And um, I probably, I could say I was one of those kids that always been into music. Um, who were you listening to at the time? I mean, what, you know, I, I remember talking to a lot of people who write and they're like, I always, I was listening to Prince and I was writing Prince songs for me. I mean, is that how oh, yeah. it started? Well, I mean, I used to listen to a lot of uh, Prince records, um, Stacy Lattisaw, Shaka Khan, uh, Jackson Five, all of the like hot old people. Afterwards, after we got to LA, I was on Power 106 or 92.3. I can't remember which station I was on, but I was rhyming over the phone tapping. That's what's so ill about it. Yeah. And Dre was coming home in his car and he heard and it. listening to it. And then he called up to the station and got a whole sound room number. However, he did it, he did it. We had a meeting with Interscope the next day, and it was, just, it was all butter from there.